Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. It's been an uh, acceptable view that this practice is uh, often used by governments that are in trouble domestically, and that is um, getting in a little uh, war with someone else. That means uh, redirecting um, people's uh, attention towards another problem, and the mass media probably will cooperate with the government and will shift the attention from a uh, bad life that you uh, have or worse than you had yesterday or the day before and redirect your attention towards the war, another enemy. The enemy is not the government who's uh, implementing its policies that do not work and you have a shitty life. It's the enemy nowadays that wants to really destroy you. Therefore, forget about us let us be in charge of you now we all have to focus over there and if you don't focus over that that means you're not a patriotic guy you don't love your country you might be a, a traitor you might be an infiltrated guy over here you might be cooperating with the enemy and they start labeling you and then eventually they will say maybe we can even arrest you for treason how about that so keep your mouth shut and uh, go back in line I have here an article um, about uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel and uh, if you remember the United States and Israel, the leaders of the military uh, <coughs> command, which was Mark Milley in this case and an Israeli general, they met and they discussed the cooperation against Iran all of a sudden and they're thinking about doing something to Iran. What can that be done? Uh, not talking. I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I, <laughs> I'm 99% that's not about it. If the military meet to talk about certain kind of uh, synchronized moves, uh, I don't think they talk about, I don't know, ping pong or um, I don't know, karaoke. In this case, as you know, Iran uh, was uh, accused of, um, you know, uh, developing uh, uranium to uh, 90% and or something like that they say no we didn't go more than 60 percent and then the americans and uh, israelis decided to uh, maybe we're gonna do something to iran president biden before this a day before this meeting between the israeli and american uh, generals um, extended his uh, uh, emergency powers something that was instituted first i think by first it's continuous since uh, uh, Barack Obama, for, former president, when he was president, then extended by uh, former president Trump, now extended by Biden, which gives the president of the United States about I don't know, 100, around 150 more powers that are not written in the Constitution. And one of those uh, power is, powers is to um, order attacks on other countries if he considers that it's in the natural, national interest and it's a threat and all that. So it's kind of like a very, very fast coincidence between Bi uh, Iran, Biden, military. So what happened now? Iran yesterday said, well, we're going to allow the IAEA, you know, International Atomic Energy uh, Association Agen Agency, Association Agency, to come and uh, check our butts and verify uh, everything they want in the, in Iran to see that um, they can monitor, and we're not doing anything to build an atomic bomb. Well, they did this probably because of the threat of these two guys and because they want to buy time to see what's going on in Russia, and they are supposed to receive some S-400. Uh, defense uh, systems which i don't know if they work but anyway they um so it's kind of like an accelerated move towards something and that is war against iraq iraq jesus christ not anymore iran could come next iraq because iraq is not uh, the cradle of democracy and freedom uh, the one that we brought remember with our luggage and with we just spew them boom boom get some democracy boom boom get some freedom and that too so I think this is what's, uh, where the, the direction all this is going. Now, the, um, the chief of the um, IAEA, the International Atomic Energy uh, Agency, made some claims saying that, hey, uh, guys, uh, you, uh, Israel, United States, hold your horses. 
uh, that would be illegal if you attack under the international law. Would be illegal if you attack another country, Israel, uh, Israel, Jesus Christ, Iraq. Now Israel, Iran. Now Netanyahu has some problems in um, Israel. If you're familiar with all those mass demonstrations, uh, hundreds of thousands of people in the streets, and it has uh, is not it's, it's shaky. He has some people in his government that really, really made some claims about uh, wiping certain kind of uh, things out, if you know what I mean. Then they told us that we misunderstood what he said. I want to make some uh, uh, videos on that one, but uh, I said, well, uh, maybe I'm going to put it in, uh, insert it in a different video, which is this one. So what happened with, with Netanyahu? Netanyahu answers the IAEA chief's remarks. And says rebuffs IEA's chief remarks against possible attack on Iran. Reuters and is from today, March 5th, 2023. Today is the day uh, Stalin, the Georgian Joseph Stalin, died. 1953, I think, wasn't it? I think 1953. Israel rebuffed an unworthy as unworthy on Sunday comments by the UN nuclear watchdog chief that any Israeli or US attack on Iran's nuclear facilities would be illegal. Having visited Tehran in a bid to loosen deadlocked talks on renewing its 2015 nuclear deal with world powers, International Atomic Energy Agency Chairman Rafael Grossi on Saturday said, and I'm quoting, any military attack on nuclear facilities is outlawed. End quote. He was responding to a reporter's question about threats by Israel and the United States to attack Iran's nuclear facilities if they deem diplomacy meant to deny it the bomb to be at a dead end. Tehran said its nuclear program is peaceful. And I'm quoting now. Rafael Grossi is a worthy person who made an unworthy remark. End quote. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told his cabinet in televised remarks on Sunday. And I'm quoting, outside what law? It is permissible for Iran, which openly calls for our destruction, to organize the tools of slaughter for our destructions? Are we forbidden from defending ourselves? We are obviously permitted to do so, to do this. End quote. The IAEA said on Saturday, Grossi has received sweeping assurances from Iran that it will assist a long stalled investigation into uranium particles found at undeclared sites and reinstall remove monitoring equipment. So, outside of what law? Well, if we do, you know, all this, what uh, this guy said here, you know, if we agree that, I know, Iran uh, calls, openly calls for their destruction, uh, organize the tools of slaughter, then uh, you can uh, attack them. Well, if you use this in other conflicts, justify it, you justify it like this, then uh, a lot of uh, unprovoked attacks, if you know what I mean, uh, become provoked. Because remember, what Netanyahu is uh, stating is stating that another country uh, openly says that they want to destroy my country and they are uh, arming themselves to do so. Now, this is a general statement between a country, another country, armies, and I'm going to hit them with the help of the bully boy, United States of America. So this is the story. Now this is not something that only one country in the world can uh, claim. Hey, self-defense, this happens. Other countries can use the same, the same argumentation and say, well, uh, Ukraine is arming itself, NATO is an organization that wants to uh, destroy us. That's how they see it. And in self-defense, we have to go and defend our people that are killed by uh, Ukrainian uh, military in Donbas. And we have to intervene to defend them, which is us, because they're Russian. Uh, um, they're Russians. All right. So what are you going to say about that? And they say, well, it's unprovoked. So in self-defense, those guys in Donbas, you know, they picked up arms when the Ukrainians sent tanks in 2014. Remember? That's how it was. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. The media would not say it, but that's how it ha what happened. So the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych of Ukraine, yeah, he got elected 
And he was the president with his government, legal, democratically elected, recognized. He was overthrown by some people with the help, support of outside uh, agencies. Now, under any kind of law, in any kind of country, those people who organized that coup, they are called traitors. And treason is punished by, not by candies, giving candies, ladies of the night and uh, good red wine. No, no, no. Okay? So let's put it aside. Now, these guys, when they overthrew the government of Viktor Yanukovych in 2014, the Western countries that love democracy recognize the whole thing. The new leaders were A-OK. -okay. So when these guys tell you about freedom, democracy and uh, sovereignty and all that, remember that. Just one of uh, many examples. And then when that, when that happened, these guys here in the East, the, the Russians in East Ukraine, in Donbass, said, no, we don't recognize those guys. Those are, you know, traitors. They're not the, the, uh, the, the government. And then those guys, you know, oh, it's okay, we're going to send you a few things there. So they sent web, military, Ukrainian military to, fight, to kill these guys. These guys in self-defense picked up arms, helped by the Russians to defend themselves. They didn't attack anybody. They were attacked, okay? So there's self-defense right there. So that applies to them as it applies to others. And then it was the Minsk 1, Minsk 2, and so on. And then they said, you know, Russians intervened to say, you know what, you guys arming uh, uh, Ukraine, you want to get into NATO, NATO, no, NATO is against us, NATO tries to destroy us. This is our interpretation, all right? And why, what, what's the existence of NATO after 1991? And obviously towards us, because you expand only towards us, and blah, 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 you promise not to do. So we are in self-defense, we have to act in Ukraine. They tried to discuss with NATO, with Americans, they said, you didn't even talk. And these guys, you're okay, we're going to act. Now, that's unprovoked. That's how we are supposed to look at it, as unprovoked attack of Ukraine by Russia. But here, Netanyahu says, no, 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 wait a second. Those guys say they want to, uh -huh. they build their military like Ukraine, you know, and these guys were with NATO. <laughs> and Iran, Iran is not NATO, all right? Let's put it in the context. Doesn't have nuclear weapons. These guys have many of them. United States, Great Britain, France, okay? So the proportion is much, much different. But uh, interesting is going to be this. Uh, this situation uh, was supposed to, uh, or at least if they're going to attack uh, Iran, US and uh, um, Israel, nobody can stop them. They can go at United Nations and condemn whatever, whomever. The uh, UN Security Council, US will veto that. Some people will abstain. And some people, you know, will do whatever. Nothing will happen over there. Then in the General Assembly, the same. They, they will probably condemn it with a majority like they did with many other ones. And then what? The United States will say, and Israel will say, you, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Everybody back in line, I'm going to, okay, I thought so. And they will do whatever they do. You know what that would mean? Iran is 80, 80 uh, um, million people, a population. They try to destabilize, they, I think, uh, they try to stabilize that country for so long, uh, including the latest uh, attempts. That didn't work. And now, <clears throat> you know, they try this. What do you think is going to happen? We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm not uh, looking at uh, Netanyahu as his claim being wrong or right. I'm just looking, what if everybody would use the same argumentation? Then certain things will definitely have to be reversed as interpretation, like unprovoked, or is legal, or not legal, international law. How about that? So when these guys are going to talk, United States, about international law, well, Iran is still a, uh, however you want to take it, still a sovereign country, independent country, bad as it is that we decided is bad. But, you know, if, when it's going to attack you, then I think you're going to, oh, we're not going to wait then. Well, by my interpretation, I think that you right now, you are very threatening to me. I'm going to come and defend myself. Bang. Well, so it's dangerous. The, not dangerous. Remember, the uh, United States felt threatened by uh, Iraq. Remember that one? Uh, when we brought freedom and democracy, we were threatened because we knew, the intelligence told us, that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction, that it's an imminent threat. They will use it on us. We have to act. And who doesn't uh, uh, come with us? is against us. That means we're going to do it. And they did it. 
And was it, uh, and after they didn't find, oh, we brought democracy and freedom. That's what we did. Well, you can't change on, on the run. Who, who asked you to come over there? What if they want to bring Islamic law in your country because they think that's the way to be? Oh, so everything is based on this. So all this talk about international law, rule-based uh, order, world order, this is just BS for idiots. And we are not idiots. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.